Copa America 2024. We had uh, oh, uh, a lot to talk about controversy and then some, but we have the groups, Michael Ahud, we have the groups and we have Nico to talk about this and so much more after this series of events. Let's take a look at the groups. Let's start with Copa America, Group A, Argentina, Peru, Chile, CONCACAF, number five, meaning, in other words, it's going to be Canada or Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, that's a pretty interesting group. We're going to dive into analysis on each group as we move forward. Let's take a look at Group B, Grupo B, Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela, and Jamaica. This one's going to be a tough one. I don't know if there is a group of death, but this one's close. Group B, Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela, just depends on so many factors with all of those. Now, this one might be the true group of death. Say Bolivia, but Panama's playing excellent. Uruguay might win it all. United States has a tough group. That's Group C. And closing it out with Group D, Brazil, Colombia, Paraguay, and either Costa Rica or Honduras. That also might be considered a group of death. So many things that we could talk about. So many factors, and we're going to try to do our best to kind of <laughs> get you all caught up and straighten this out. Canada, Trinidad and Tobago are going to go at it. All these games are going to be played in March, end of March, March 23rd to be exact. Costa Rica versus Honduras. And then we're going to find out who gets in to the Copa America group stage. Starts June 20th. And quarterfinals, July 4th, and then the semifinals, July 9th through 10th, and then the final, July the 14th, Copa America 2024. All right, he's ready. He's riled up. He wants to talk about this, and he wants to break it down, and he wants to get it right. Nico Cantor, buenas noches, buenas nights. Welcome to Scoreline, hermano. One of the hosts of Morning Footy. Crack all around 24-7 for CBS Sports Network. Talk to me. I know that you're feeling this. Obviously, Argentina has a very nice adjustable group, but the rest of the way was kind of controversial. Things were happening. Balls were bouncing. Talk to me, Nico. Adrian, what's up? You're the real crack. And by the way, the official Spanish dictionary has allowed the term crack to be in the dictionary from now on. So it's an official term. We could use it. That's MVP in Spanish. I, I know that you like using your Spanglish and we're talking Copa America. Yep. So, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll use a little bit about it. And I don't think controversy is the right word. I think it was just an absolute disaster. There's no controversy <laughs> when there's when when you say the rules and the restrictions of your draw and then Conmebol decides to just not follow those rules blatantly. And they, they, they messed up in the groups when when they drew Bolivia and they wanted to put in Bolivia in the group that had Mexico, Ecuador and Venezuela. The remaining teams in pot four were CONCACAF teams, and that created an issue because the U.S. group would have had three CONCACAF teams, and you're not allowed to have three CONCACAF teams. So I, I still need to go back to the broadcast and shuffle through the sequence and what their official shuffling of those last uh, teams in, in, in pot four were. But officially, the groups are, and, and they change it on the graphic on stage, like, it's Flagrant, I'm at yes, a loss yes. for words because <laughs> I'm it, it's I'm almost irate at the fact that they couldn't get a draw right. Argentina, Peru, Chile, and then the CONCACAF playoff between Trinidad and Tobago, Canada, Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela, and then Jamaica, the U.S., Uruguay, Panama, Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Paraguay, and then the CONCACAF playoff between Costa Rica and Honduras. So that's where we're at. Um, Argentina, again, faces Chile like they did in Copa America Centenario 2016. Um, but where do you want to start? There's so much to talk about here. Uh, I think Michael's got the first one. He wants to talk USA. Yes, Nico, <laughs> good to have you on Scoreline. It's been a long time coming. Good to see your face again. Let's talk U.S. men's national team. The one team in pot two that everyone was trying to avoid, they got Uruguay. They've been red hot. What do you make of their draw in this tournament? Yeah, listen, Copa America for the United States is going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. They will have played a South American team, and they're built different, man. And the United States hasn't been showing that they're at the level to compete regularly with South American teams. The thing is that they don't have to regularly compete. It'll be a one-off here, one-off there, and then it's the big dogs, right? Uruguay, it's probably it's that first game. Um you got to get some sort of a result because you don't want to start off with the left foot forward. You want to start off on the right foot. And then Panama at the moment is flying high. Uh, I understand historically it's it's a lower CONCACAF 
team, you would say it's an, of inferior quality, but you need to get the job done. Um, I do believe the United States is better than Panama and Bolivia, but it's it's easier said than done. South American teams are are built differently, and and Bolivia just beat Peru in in World Cup qualifiers. Obviously, in the altitude in Bolivia, it's absolutely different. It's a different team, but player for player, quality for quality, the United States has a better team than than uh, Bolivia and then Panama. But that's just saying one thing here. And then you got to play those games. We're so far away from those matches. Uh, it's 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 going to be very exciting. Oh, the, the Uruguay game is last 10, excuse me. Um, but still, you don't want to go into Uruguay trying to get a result. You, you want to have taken care of business with two wins under your belt going into a very difficult match against Marcelo Bielsa's Uruguay. And, and Uruguay, Nico, obviously going in, I think for many of us, is the favorito with all due respect. Argentina coming in on paper, we have to say they are the favorite. They're the world champ, if you will. But, uh, uh, excuse me, Uruguay has looked really, really sharp looking under Bielsa, as you mentioned. I mean, to have looked excellent. But we'll get to them in a second because I want to follow up on the United States real, real quick. This is a chance not that, to have like a signature moment, a signature tournament. You talk about those two uh, wins you get right out of the gate, and then you're facing Uruguay. You have a positive result there. You get in, into the knockout stages. That's a pretty successful start for USA. Is that considered, all right, that's great. We got into the knockout stage. Hang our hat on that. Or can they do more? Will that be uh, a signature moment opportunity for the United States in this uh, Copa America? Signature moment. I don't know if beating Uruguay in the group stage is the signature moment. It'll be big. But then if, if we're talking about the United States getting to a World Cup semifinal, to be that generation that breaks another barrier, real success is getting to the Copa America final. Okay. Um, you, you can stumble your way to a semifinal like they did again in, in the Copa America Centenario. The United States has the quality to to get to a Copa America semifinal because they frankly they do they're playing at home and probably a team they're in group B let's 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 look at the bracket they're in group uh C excuse me and they'll be playing let's just say they're the runner up they'll be playing the winner of group D and that's frankly that could be Brazil that could be Colombia you then you got to win that game right or let's just say they do win for some reason they do win then you you're facing either Colombia or Paraguay you're going to have to have several signature wins because the quarterfinal is not good enough. Uh, so beating Uruguay and then whoever you get in the next round, it's 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 going to be difficult. The United States got to a semifinal in the Copa America Centenario. Um, I believe they didn't play a, a, a strong, a powerhouse team in in, in the quarterfinal. If, uh, I'll have to look that up. But um, regardless, the United States is going to make waves if they play in a Copa America final. Um and and even if they get to the semifinal, beating either Brazil or or Colombia on the way, um, it, it it'll be it'll be big, it'll be significant. But signature win for the United States, we we expect the best in this country from our sportsmen, and we expect the best out of the USMNT. Um, and right now they haven't proved that they're that they're at their best. And 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 obviously for the development of this team, for the development of of Berhalter cycle, uh, when you're on the doorstep of semifinal and you're able to break that barrier, because we're talking about breaking barriers and and pushing the door and pushing the envelope with soccer in the U.S. A, a final would really make a difference. All right, now we're going to kind of fly through the rest of them real quick. I want to talk and start with Mexico. Lamborghini, Jimmy Lozano hasn't really had a time to work his own process, get his own roster, get his players going. From here to the summertime, Mexico could become a power player, literally, in this uh, Copa America 2024. I foresee them in this group. It's going to be tough. Ecuador's got a great young generation. They're going to be tough. Venezuela, you just kind of get a feel that they're always going to be tough and play you strong. And, and Jamaica, you know that they're going to come uh, with some good football and make it difficult. Not easy for Mexico in this group. Well, absolutely. Listen, and Mexico, just like the United States, has a gauntlet in the summer where you got to be successful in Nations League, and only one team can be successful in Nations League. That's the U.S., that's Mexico, or the other two teams that are playing in it. Anything else is considered a failure in the eyes of both of these federations. So that's the momentum that you go into Copa America with. And look, and, and Ecuador is a, is, is a tough team with quality players, and Venezuela, we can't overlook them. They're on the up. They tied Brazil. They're one of the first ones to take points away from Brazil 
at Brazil in a really long time in the World Cup qualifiers. They're putting up significant wins. They're doing very well in World Cup qualifiers. They're competing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, FIFA window in, FIFA window out with the best in South America. So that 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 shouldn't be overlooked. It, it, it will be a very difficult group stage for Mexico. Nico, we've seen and heard rumors of Scaloni, Lionel Scaloni, and the other Lionel, Lionel Messi. This could be potentially their last matches. Could we say that this could be their last matches, or is there more on the horizon in the future for this dynamic duo that's yielded a lot of success? Yeah, like you said, Lahoud, Messi has always said that his last games for 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 Argentina will be the Copa America, right? Um, we'll see how he feels after that. It's not set in stone. And for Scaloni, with so many rumors about his continuity with with, with the national team, uh, we'll see where that happens too. There have been reports as of today that there will continue, that there were meetings between him and the Argentine FA president, but nothing official, nothing for certain, and you never know. So we'll see at the end. We'll, we'll see in the next FIFA window what happens uh, and, and what updates we have. Hey, we're going to see Nico tomorrow. I know you're going to be on fire on morning footy. You guys are going to have plenty of material to talk about and then some. So again, Argentina still the favorite going in. Uruguay is coming in strong. But Mexico, United States have a chance to prove who they are right now at this stage. Gracias, Nico. Thanks, guys.